Thank you for joining us for another power-packed message provided by Monroe Global Incorporated and MonroeGlobal.com. We transform followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change. We hope that this message is a blessing to you as you advance your life and discover your purpose. Now, let's go into the message. Jesus Christ came to earth and in Matthew chapter 4, verse, 11, verse 17, rather, verse 17, you'll find these words written. His first public statement, I keep going back to it because you cannot improve on truth. Jesus said these words, his first statement, Matthew 4, 17. He had just come out of the wilderness full of the Holy Spirit, full of the Holy Spirit. And he declared, verse 17, it says, and from that time forward, Jesus began to preach, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has arrived on earth. That's what's written in that verse. So Jesus came announcing not a democracy, not a republic. He didn't announce the entrance of a religion. He announced the entrance of a kingdom. A kingdom is defined as, and you want to write this down if you don't remember, a kingdom is defined as the governing authority and influence of a king over a territory, impacting it with his will, his purpose, and his intent. I repeat that. A kingdom is the governing influence and authority of a king over his territory, which is normally called his domain, and he impacts it with his purpose, his will, and his intentions. In other words, a kingdom is not a religion. It is a government and its impact on a territory. That's why a king must have a dominion. And that's why when a king is with his dominion, it is called a king dominion, a kingdom. You cannot be a king without territory. You got to rule something. And you cannot be a king without people. You got to have citizens. And so Jesus didn't come to earth to introduce a religion. He came to introduce a government that had been driven from earth by man's disobedience. Actually, what Adam did was what you would call civil war. He fought against his own country. And what you would call that then, in practical terms, is secession. To secede means that a piece of the country decide to become independent from the whole country. Or Adam can also be described as committing high treason. Treason is when you gave authority to a person and you trusted them with the authority and they used it against you. Adam did that. Remember Genesis 1.26? It says, and God said, let us make man in our own image and likeness. And he says, and let them have dominion over the earth. In other words, God gave Adam authority under delegated power. And Adam used the authority to cut the territory off from the government of heaven. Jesus came to earth as the Bible calls him in uh, Corinthians chapter 15 calls Jesus the second Adam. Why? Because he is man coming again in the original form and that's why his announcement is so important. He says, repent. The word repent means change your mind. Change the way you think. Why? Because the government of heaven has returned to earth. That was the great announcement. Actually, Jesus came to, can I put this in a practical term? He came to give out citizenship immigration forms that's why he says come unto me all of you are weighted down with all this struggle trying to make a living and i will give you rest from your labor why take my government's yoke upon you because my government's yoke is easy and deliver my country is light Amen. citizenship 
And the only way to become a genuine, true, original citizen is to be born into a country. And that's why Nicodemus, when he asked Jesus, how can a man enter the country of heaven? Christ was very simple. He says, you must be born again. You were born into the kingdom of darkness. You were born into the kingdom of the flesh. Now you got to be born into the kingdom of God. In other words, citizenship, God wants it to be natural. And that is why it's important to understand a kingdom. Now, here's something about a kingdom. And I mentioned to you about the governor of the Church of Kings Islands because, you see, he still represents what I'm trying to teach you. He is not from the Turks and Caicos Islands because the Turks and Caicos Islands are still a territory of Great Britain. In other words, they are one of the last colonies of Great Britain. So they had to send someone in there to run the place from England. He's called the governor. And his job is to make sure that whatever England wishes happens in the Turks and Caicos Islands. He doesn't speak their language. He speaks differently from what they speak. He doesn't look like them. He has a different pigmentation. His culture is not like theirs because he was born somewhere else you see when the governor comes into the territory he is different from the people so he has to teach them his new language we call it tongues he doesn't act like the people that's why the bible said do not walk in the flesh because he ain't flesh walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of your old culture so he came to change your culture by possessing you. Amen. He doesn't think like the people in the colony. He came to give them the thoughts of God. So when God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways, ways means my lifestyle, are not like yours, he said, therefore come, let us reason together why? So you can walk in the spirit, no longer in your old culture. It's impossible to say you are in the kingdom of God and not change. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Holy Spirit, therefore, is the governor that God sent to the kingdom. He sent it to the colony. And the Holy Spirit is in this place to turn this place into heaven. Now, we are now in session, I don't know, maybe number eight or something, so you missed a lot already. But I want to pick up here where we talk about who is the Holy Spirit. Just a couple of thoughts about the primary goal of Jesus, why Jesus came to earth. Number one, the priority of God is the return of his kingdom influence on earth. That's what God wants. His number one goal is to have his kingdom on earth again. God is not interested in a religion. And God is not interested in your rituals. God is not interested in all of your traditions and all the things that you've been doing. God has only one interest. And that is to have his kingdom government return to earth. And this is why we keep teaching over again and again that the kingdom of God is God's number one priority. And I quote it to you again. Jesus said it without any question. Matthew 6 verse, 20, verse 33 he said but seek ye first the kingdom of God make that your first priority and everything else will be added to your life he was telling us that the number one interest the number one principle of God the number one concern and, and commitment of God is his kingdom on earth so the key so the influence of the kingdom of God on earth is important. The Bahamas used to be under Great Britain and they made us just like Britain. We drive on the left hand side like Britain. We drink tea instead of coffee like Great Britain. We wear short pants and suits, long socks. You used to see us walking around when we was kids. 
like Great Britain, we learned all their songs, we learned all their history. As a matter of fact, the Bahamian knows nothing about Africa, even though 90% of them came from Africa. Because when a kingdom takes over your life, they wipe out your history and give you theirs. Say, Amen. God wants you to forget about your sin life and only learn about heavenly thinking. That's the goal of a kingdom. To wipe out your past and give you its past. The Bible says, all who believe in him, they have become new creatures. All things have been washed away and then they brainwash you again with new things. Give God a praise for a new way of thinking. Paul says, be not conformed to this world's, this world's way of thinking, but be ye transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. That means the Holy Spirit is sent to earth to basically brain wash you or to wash your brains from sin thinking guilt thinking depression thinking fear thinking you know confusion and frustration and to give you I like what Paul said God didn't give you the spirit of fear but of power and love and a sound mind give God a praise for a new way of thinking you cannot live in this country called heaven on earth unless you have mental transformation by the Holy Spirit and he does it by he teaching you the history of heaven. That's what the word of God is. It's heaven, history on earth. So the key to the influence of the kingdom in this colony is the presence of the governor. And the governor is the Holy Spirit. Now, number three, the Holy Spirit is heaven's governor on earth. Therefore, the return of the Holy Spirit is the most important act of redemption in God's program. Let me make a statement. Thank you, Lord. The most important person on earth is the most misunderstood person on earth. It's the Holy Spirit. The most important person on earth is a person you cannot see with your eyes. And it's the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the only evidence of the presence of heaven. <laughs> a few moments ago, I told you I was with the governor of the Turks and Caicos Islands from Great Britain. And you know, in that room, he was the only evidence that the queen was present. So everyone who shook his hands, we had to bow, we had to say, Your Excellency. Why? Because he was the government of Great Britain. He was the monarchy. He was Queen Elizabeth. Can a man be a woman? Absolutely yes. In that case. Well, can a woman be called son of God? Yes. As many as believed on him, Male or female, they have the power, the authority to call themselves a female. I'm a son of God. Why? I represent the son, even though I'm a woman. Give God a hand for representing the government. Praise God. It's not about gender. It's about backup. You're being backed up by the government when you show up. Praise God. He's the most important person on earth. And point number four, the primary and principal goal of God the Father for sending Jesus was to restore the governor to the colony. To give the influence of heaven back to earth. Uh, there was a scripture read tonight that is the heart of my teaching tonight. And that is, he says, wait here until you receive the promise of the father Jesus said I came to earth so that you might receive the promise of the father in other words my father made a promise somewhere and I came to deliver on the promise uh, praise God the Holy Spirit is called the promise of the father matter of fact in the book of Acts it says this spake he concerning the Holy Spirit 
When did the father promise to send him? He promised to send him the day we lost him. I'm going to quote it for you. He promised to send him back the day we lost him. We lost him in Genesis chapter 3. It's the very day that my forefather Adam and your forefather Adam turned our backs on the government, cursed the king, cut ties with the country, and decided to become independent. And that very day is when the father said, the woman shall have a seed. And that seed shall come into the earth and he shall crush your head referring to the illegitimate kingdom king satan head means authority government power he will come to take back what was stolen and deliver it back to the children who lost it it was the promise of the holy spirit let me just say something to you. It's very important. When Adam sinned, follow me now, look at me, look at me. When Adam sinned, let me ask you some questions. Did Adam lose earth? No. Still on earth. Did he lose his body? No. He lived 930 years. Did Adam lose his mind? No. Still thinking. Did Adam lose his eyes? He still could see. Did Adam lose the animals? They were still here. Did Adam lose the fish in the sea? No. If you, matter of fact, if you came to Adam on Monday when he didn't sin and you came on Tuesday after he sinned, you would still see nothing changed. He lost nothing that you could see. You're getting it. He lost the invisible governor. So God made a promise. He says, look, I know you messed up, Adam, but the woman, the same woman that Satan used, I'm going to use a woman too. And I'm going to come into the human race legally, and I'm going to bring back the government legally. He's going to be in one body legally, and he's going to come and crush your authority and take back, and he's going to give back to the children what they lost. What did they lost? They lost the Holy Spirit. That was the promise. So Jesus came to earth really, really, primarily not to die on the cross. Not to be buried in the grave. Not to be resurrected. That was not his primary purpose. Let me ask another question to prove it. If Jesus came to earth, was very good, healed everybody, fed people, walked on the water, he was crucified, capital punishment. He died, they buried him, he rose again, and then he left. Would that help us? We'd still be in sin. All of that didn't help us. Because all of that process, read my lips, was a means to an end. He couldn't wait to get to the end. The end was when he rose again, the Bible says, he said to them, meet me in Galilee. I want to meet you in Galilee. Why? I got one major act left. It's the most important act. And that act was strange. The Bible says he went to each one of them and he held their heads and he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit then he left see the whole thing was that act bringing the influence of heaven back to earth and putting it back where it was in the body of a human that's why the Bible says your temple your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit the governor can I make a statement very important statement the Holy Spirit is the kingdom What is, what is the kingdom? A government. He is the kingdom. 
He is the only contact you have with your country. Heaven. That is why I don't care who you got in your life. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you are still an illegitimate country. Walking on two legs. You are a foreigner. You are an illegal immigrant without the Holy Spirit. And that's why there's no peace. You know, illegal immigrants got to keep running and hiding and watching. Or watching on the shoulder. Why? Because when you are not in touch with your country, you're not at home, you're always suspicious, afraid, live in fear. The Bible says God has not given you the spirit of fear. He said, but we cry, Abba, Father, by the Holy Spirit. He came to teach us to say, Abba. Not only is the king my Lord, the king is my family. Boy, I can't wait to teach sometime and maybe, you know, in 2008 when I get to ta start talking about, about kingdom, uh, kingdom relationship with the, gov with the country's government. That's heavy stuff, man. You realize that we are the only kingdom in history where every citizen is family to the king? Listen, friends, this is a strange kingdom. Glory, hallelujah. If you go to England as a British citizen, you cannot go into Buckingham Palace. Why? You are not family. Even though you are a citizen, you are not family. But in the kingdom of God, it's a strange kingdom. Not only is the king your king, but he's the king of kings. So the Bible says, come boldly into the throne room. When I was in England a few weeks ago, we went past Buckingham Palace again. We always go there, you know. And you can't get near the palace. There's a big yard between the palace and the gate. The gate's like 10, 15 feet high. Then they got soldiers all over the place. You can't even get near. Why? Because you ain't family. The Bible says he was not afraid to call us brothers. How can your savior also be your big brother? How can your king also be your brother? Because in the kingdom of God, we all one family. You ought to praise God. I say you ought to praise God. It's a mind-blowing kingdom. And that's why God becomes a little concerned when you become, you know, so intimidated by the relationship between he and you that you become afraid to even approach him. He loved you so much. He came down to approach you. To take away your fear of him. That's why he became man, Randy. Because he wanted you to not be afraid of him. Your family. Imagine family with divinity. Give him a praise, just a couple of seconds. Worship him. Family with divinity. My father is a divine God. The Bible says we are partakers of the divine nature. The word nature there actually means genetics. It's a strange Greek word. We are partakers of the divine gene. Glory, hallelujah, Constance. Notice I have the gene of God. That means when you sin, you become uncomfortable. Because it's not in your genes to sin. That's why you hate to do wrong, because even though you do it, you feel guilty. Yeah. It is your genes reacting. Yeah. Guilt is a genetic response to abnormal living. Conviction is when the governor tells you, you know that's wrong. So you get two wonderful things to help you not sin 
You got the gene and you got the governor. So live right so you don't upset in both of them. Can I hear an amen? You live clean, both of them happy. Your genes happy. You can walk around and don't be ashamed. Look at nobody. They can't talk with you. No matter what they say, there's no guilt. Why? Because my genes are happy. I live holy. Now, I want you to write this list down. Who is the Holy Spirit? This may sound like an obvious question, but it's not an obvious question. Because the Holy Spirit, as I said, is the most misunderstood person on earth. He is also the most misunderstood part of the Trinity of God. Many people think the Holy Spirit is a smoke in a room. Or the Holy Spirit is some mist that comes into a place and people fall on the ground. That's not the Holy Spirit. Write this down. The Holy Spirit is not a it. People say, do you feel it? You got it? He's not an it. Jesus never, ever referred to the Holy Spirit as an it. He always, perpetually, constantly used the word he. Matter of fact, one time he wanted to make it so clear, he said, and when he, the Holy Spirit, comes. He said, now he could have said, when the Holy Spirit comes. But he said, no, no, no. I want to make sure you know that he's a person. And when he, the Holy Spirit, comes, he will lead you into all truth. He. Number two, the Holy Spirit is not a cloud. I think we have been so bitterly confused by religion, especially spooky religion. And some of the religions and the groups around today have destroyed the dignity of the Holy Spirit by creating apparitions of his so-called presence did you see the smoke tonight there was a cloud in the room Ooh. he's a person not a cloud number three the holy spirit is not a feeling i think we have relegated him to some strange pimple rising experience Goose pimples. Ooh. You know, some people come to a corporate worship experience so pent up with frustration that when they can't take it no more, they run around screaming, roll on the ground, and they call it the Holy Ghost. Mm -mm. You are simply releasing tension. He's not a feeling. He's a person. You don't need to make noise to experience the Holy Spirit. You don't need to be loud to experience the Holy Spirit. You don't need drums and cowbells and screaming and shouting and clapping to feel the Holy Spirit. Matter of fact, if you read the Bible carefully, most of the time when he showed up, it was in quietness. not feelings now let me just say this the Holy Spirit is not a feeling but he could affect your emotions he's not a feeling but he could affect your emotions to cause you to feel his presence but he's not a feeling number three number four rather the Holy Spirit is not a mist I've, hear, I, I've been hearing some funny things in my life, so I mean, just trying. You know, I said I saw sp particles in the present, particles in the room, particles. That was condensation. Y'all was sweating, and when the hot air rise and the cool air hit it, it turned into petals of droplets of, of of you know water, and it looked like you know that was sweat. Now don't get me wrong. I believe the Holy Spirit could manifest himself and, and do different things, but 99% of the time, it is not him because he doesn't want to spook you. He's a person. As a matter of fact, you can learn through this series that he's a very respectable person. You can hurt his feelings. He can actually be hurt. 
You can grieve him. The Bible says you can grieve him. It's a person. Number five, the Holy Spirit is a person. Sit up with me. The Holy Spirit is a person. Who is the Holy Spirit? First, he's a person. Number two, the Holy Spirit is a personality. Every person has a personality. That's why they call a person. What makes you a person is that you have qualities and characteristics that distinguish you from us. So we call you a separate person. The Holy Spirit is a distinct personality. He has his own style. He's a person. And number three, the Holy Spirit is a character. He has characteristics. Matter of fact, it's incredible that the Holy Spirit not only have characteristics, but he also has senses. Now, I got to be careful what I say here. When I use the word sense, I'm using it to communicate to you the same way you have five physical senses, he's got many spiritual senses. The same way you can hear physically, the Holy Spirit can hear spiritually. The same way you can discern or smell, he can discern spiritually. The same way you can see, the Holy Spirit can see spiritually. The same way you can be touched, the Holy Spirit can be touched with the feeling of your infirmities. He can feel. Let me tell you why I'm teaching you this tonight. Because 90% of you in this room don't know who lives in you. You have no relationship with this person because no one has sat you down and opened your eyes to say, you have someone habitating you. Someone. Uh, let me just say something very interesting. Years ago, I learned this. When you ignore a person, they stop talking to you. I'm going to say this again. This gets deep. The more you ignore a person, the more they ignore you. Have you noticed? If you don't refer to me, eventually, I figure, you ain't interested in me. Think. If you don't talk to me, after a while, I begin to figure, you know something? I'm not important to you. If you keep ignoring me when I talk to you, eventually I should have a little bit of sense to say, you know something, you really don't want to listen to me. I know why you're quiet. He's a person. Jesus spoke about him so practical. He said, he, the Holy Spirit, will teach you all things. Now, I used to be a teacher in the classroom. And let me tell you something. Nothing is worse as a teacher than a class of students who don't want to learn. That's the only reason why a teacher want to quit. Is when they run into a group of kids who have no interest in learning. You want to quit teaching. The Holy Ghost is ready to quit. He tell you, take this loaf of bread to Sister Jones. And you go, that's just my thoughts. And he goes, now wait a minute, you're ignoring me. And he tells you five times that day. And so he stops talking. And two things happen. Number one, you miss the blessing and Sister Jones is hungry. Huh? Holy Spirit says, get up out of bed now and pray for Pastor Miles. Pray right now. Pray. Boy, I'm tired. You know, I had, say, I had a long day. Holy Spirit. Now look. Look. I need a, a human vessel. Because I cannot interfere without your permission to help Brother Miles. That's just my mind, girl. I'm tired. And so you stay in bed. Next year, a plane crash and Pastor Miles is dead. If you ignore a person, they eventually stop talking. We listen to people more than we listen to him. We seek other people's advice more than we seek his. 
That's why we don't like to pray. Because prayer is you and your teacher hanging out together and you listening to him and you saying what he tells you to say. But you ignore him? Some of you have not heard the Holy Ghost for a long time. You know why? I don't blame him. You get up in the morning, never refer to him. You don't pray. You, you, you run out after you eat your cornflakes. You sit in traffic, get mad all day, never refer to him. You make your decisions. You buy your stuff. You invest your stuff. You run your business. You go about your job. You go to school. And never, and the whole day, never refer to him. And you do that for seven years. So he's quiet. Listen, you have to literally learn to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. He is a person who has senses. You can grieve him. The Bible says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. How do you grieve him? By ignoring his voice, the Bible says. The Bible says, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Write the word heart down there. The word heart actually means mind. That means he's going to speak to you in your thoughts. And you harden. That means, I ain't going to do that. That's just not, that ain't God. That ain't right. And that's, that's just my mind. He said, no, that's me. And so you harden your, your mind. He has senses. Write this down. The Holy Spirit has feelings. You can hurt his feelings. And I quoted that many times. Tonight. The Bible says the Holy Spirit will not, will not always strive with man. For you can grieve him. I hope from this series your life will change. Where you begin to listen to the most important person on earth and the most important person from heaven and it's not the angels the angels are not the government they work for the government but he is the government the Holy Spirit write this down the Holy Spirit is God <laughs> glory hallelujah the, the bible refers to him as the spirit of god the bible says in john 4 god is spirit they that worship him must worship him in spirit why he is god i love what jesus said oh christ says if you sin against the Holy Spirit you can never be forgiven I think I better explain that because it's very important the only sin that Jesus said you can never be forgiven of is a sin against the Holy Spirit why uh, let me explain it. I need you three guys to help me. Because you got to see how this works, okay? All right. Uh, can you stand up there quick and just face that way? Okay. Now, that's, that's God the Father. Can you stand here in the middle? That's God the Son. Can you stand back here? That's God the Holy Spirit. Now, all three of them are one. But God has expressed himself in three unique dimensions for the purpose of redemption hmm. let me put it another way you are also a trinity you are three in one so what's the big deal about understanding a trinity when you yourself are one you have a body you are a spirit and you have a soul and you are all in one walking around you are a trinity. You're just like your father. He made you in his image. The same components. Now, can you turn around this way? Let's turn around this way, okay. Jesus said, listen to my words carefully now. Very important. Listen to the words. He said, 
No man can come to the Father but by me. It's Jesus. But then he threw a little monkey wrench in the china closet. He says, and no one can come to me except the Spirit brings him. Amen. Now, watch this. So, listen to me. Listen. Because I know you don't understand this until I say it. Jesus does not forgive people. Gotcha. The Father. Read your Bible. He kept saying, if you do not forgive those who offend you, the Father will not forgive you. If you do not forgive those who persecute you, the Father. You see, the Father is the big boy. He's the one who sent you to hell, judge you. If he don't forgive you, you finish. So what you want is the Father to forgive you. And Jesus said, the only way for the Father to forgive you is when I bring you to the Father. The Father will forgive you for my sake. Why? Because I tell the Father, I died for this one. You could give him life. Amen. Oh, come on. Shout hallelujah. Now watch this. But he said, stand like that. He said, but you can't get to me unless this guy brings you to me. Which means to get to the Father, you got to get to Jesus. To get to Jesus, you need to come to the Holy Ghost. That's how important the governor is. Now listen to me. Listen to me. Oh, this is so important. In the Bahamas, when we were under the kingdom of Great Britain, if anybody, and I mean anybody, the premier, Sir Roland Simonet, the members of parliament, the senators, the city commissioners on the island, the bishop, it doesn't matter. If anybody wanted to go to England and visit the queen, the queen never even got interested in them. They couldn't get close to her. The first thing you had to do was go to that pink house. This is true. Even if you are the premier, That deep now okay so you got a phd because i don't care you gotta go to that fella well i got a phd in theology because i don't care about your phd you have to go to that fellow yep. Yep. but he know he's a millionaire you know i got you gotta go to that fellow you don't go to him and give him money <laughs> come on you religious people yeah. i give jesus five thousand because i don't want your money Go to the Holy Ghost first and let him clean your money off. Yeah. You cannot get to the king unless you first go to the governor. And the governor then sends a message to England. And if the governor says, this is heavy. If the governor clears you, Glotto Bushama. So you should have been here 40 years ago, man. That's, it was deep. If the governor clears you in Nassau, you clear. Mm -hmm. Am I right? You used to be a police force. You see, when the governor clears you, you go straight to Jesus. Right to the king. You can go into the king. And once you go to the king, then you are in the inner courts. Praise God. He said, watch this. He said, but if you sin against this guy, he can't even get you to me. Who died to forgive you, cleanse your sins, so that I can take you to the Father to forgive your sins. The Holy Spirit is the bringer. Jesus Christ is the cleaner and the Father is the forgiver. Yes, sir. Got it? Yes, sir. So you come to him with all your sin. He takes you, he brings you. 
He takes his sins, takes his blood, he washes away all your sins. Then he brings it to the Father, and the Father said, this one clean. Yes, sir. <laughs> Y'all ain't shouting, man. That time is shout right there. By the time you make it to Jesus, you're straight. That's why the Bible says, if you hear his voice tonight, sitting in that chair, watching this program, he said, if you feel his conviction, if you hear him saying, fix your life tonight, he says, do not harden your heart. Because he will not always strive. There's going to come a day where he stops calling you. Some people play with God so much. God stopped playing. And you, some people thinking, well, he always, you say there. The Bible never says God is forever suffering. The word suffering means allowance. He is long allowed. He let long foolishness for a long time. But it's only long. Long means it comes to an end. And God says, I washed my hands of you. You don't ever want the Holy Spirit to stop convicting you. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you what the word, Paul used the word anathema, anathema for people who turn their back on God so much that God turned his back on them. He used the word anathema. Now, let me explain the word. The word actually uh, is a word we translate as apostate. Apostate means a person has entered a state where they can't hear him anymore. So the Bible says God gave them over to Satan. You don't want to get there. Sometimes you make an altar call and you sit there and you know I should go. Let me tell you, if you ever think you should go, run. Why? Because that means you are still in good relationship. He's able to talk to you. Don't let your pride keep you in your seat. Talking about people gonna look. People gonna look. You better pray that he don't stop talking. He don't strive with men all the time, the Bible says. Let me tell you when you've reached apostate is when you sin and you don't feel no guilt anymore. It's over. You do that thing and you don't feel sorry about it anymore. It's over. You've committed the unpardonable sin because he cannot get you to your savior who can get you to your forgiver. Now let me explain how the Pharisees and scribes committed the unpardonable sin. Here's how they did it. <laughs> Jesus came to earth and he was filled with the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is in Jesus 100%. All of Jesus, Holy Spirit. When the power of the Holy Spirit worked through the flesh, Jesus, and worked a miracle, the Pharisees and scribes told him, you did that by the power of the devil. That's what they said. They said, you cast out that demon with the demon. In other words, they called the Holy Spirit the devil. Now, if you call him the, the devil, you ain't going to come to him. Matter of fact, you literally curse the only person who could help you. It's the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus said, hey guys, you don't want to do that. Now watch him. Jesus said, you can say anything you want about the Son of Man. But don't talk bad about the Holy Ghost. He said, because I'm just a cleanser. He's the bringer. Don't get the bringer mad. If the bringer gets mad, you can't come to the cleaner. If you can't get to the cleaner, you'll never get to the forgiver. Let's thank God for the Holy Spirit. Come on, give him a loud praise, the Holy Spirit. He is the key to your salvation. No man, no man, he says, no man comes to the other but by me. That's why the other religions watching this program, wherever you are, you got to check them out first. What do they say about Jesus and what do he have? 
If they say there be no such thing as the Holy Spirit, they can never be born again. You know what Jesus said? He said, you want to enter the kingdom of God? He said, I can't even bring you in. I'm just a cleaner. Except you be born of the Spirit. You cannot enter the country of heaven. That guy, I told you, is the most important person on earth. So from this night forward, repent. Come on, say it, I repent. Repent means I change my attitude toward the Holy Spirit. Lift your hands and repent right now. Just say, I just, the Holy Spirit say, do it. Just say, tell him you're sorry for ignoring him all these years. Tell him you are sorry and you will not do it again. You will listen to his voice. You will learn his voice. You will learn to be develop, develop the hearing to hear his voice. You're going to learn how he speaks and how he moves and how he talks. So you can know. Father, forgive us. Forgive us for ignoring the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, O oh great Trinity. Is this good? Amen. The Holy Spirit is it's awesome. He has a verse you want to write down. And uh, I think this is a very important uh, verse, John 16. I told you to turn to John 16. John chapter 16, verse 13. But when he, Jesus speaking, the Holy Spirit of truth has come. He, not it, He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of His own will, but only what He hears. I told you, you can hear. And He will tell you, it means He can talk. <laughs> what is yet to come, that means He can see. Watch this, Holy Ghost. He will bring, that means he got hands, he can bring things. He will bring glory to me by taking. He can take from what is mine and making it known, he can teach unto you. All that belongs to the Father. Hey, buddy, watch this now. Where's the Father? Up here. All that belongs to the Father, I love this, is mine. Now Jesus in the middle. <laughs> this is why I said, the Spirit will make known from what is mine and make it known to you. Daddy gave me everything. If you want it, he'll bring you to it. Give him a praise. Any religion that doesn't have a Holy Spirit cannot help you. They can keep you very busy and very poor. They can't help you. The kingdom of God is love, joy, peace in the Holy Ghost, the Bible says. I put it to you that when you read a verse like this, this one, th th this one gets real deep here. Uh, this word, Jesus said, and when the comforter has come. Now I want to kind of wrap up on this area here, but the comforter. The word comforter that Jesus uses for the Holy Ghost, write it down, comforter, is a Greek word. Now Jesus never spoke Greek really. He spoke Hebrew. He was a Jew. But they translated the Bible from Hebrew to Greek in the Hellenistic period, they call it. And so many of the scriptures are actually written from Hebrew to Greek and then from Greek to Aramaic and from Aramaic into, you know, different languages like French and German. And then we got it into English recently in the 16th century. But this word Jesus used, you go back to the Hebrew word, the Greek word that is translated from the Hebrew word is the word parakletos. Paracletus. He says, when he, the comforter, shall come, he will teach you. He 
will guide you. He will take and give to you. He, who? The paracletus. The word paraclete, now you're going to like this. Our modern word for paraclete, write this down, is the word secretary. The, the, the old meaning of the word means helper. Helper. One who comes alongside to help you. To help you. Now, the Holy Ghost is what? The governor of the kingdom. When the British took over these islands, they sent a governor to the Bahamas from England. The governor's job was to help us develop British culture. He couldn't make us, so he helped us. We had to submit to the British will. That's why you were called subjects. We had to submit. So we, the, he told us, he told us, he, the governor told us, we will drive on the left. So we obeyed, and so we drive on the left. Now you can disobey and drive on the right. What happens when you drive on the right? There is a way that same right unto a man but the end thereof is an accident and that's why your life is so kapunkal up right now because you keep believing that you can drive on the right in his kingdom you can't get away from driving on the right you, you, you don't get away you get in trouble he's a paraclete Jesus actually used the term I will send you another just like me. That's the word he used. Remember I told you that the Holy Spirit is God and Christ is God. He said when I leave I'm going to send someone and he is me too. Yes. But he's the other me. Yes. <laughs> I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you without help. To become a kingdom citizen. I've heard people say this. You know, I want to become a believer. But I'm not strong enough. When I get strong enough. When I can stop doing this and stop doing that. Then I'm going to come. That's why I didn't come yet. That's probably why you're fighting with your own private devils. Because you're still trying to do it by yourself. God says, look, for you to learn kingdom culture, you need help. And you need help from the other country. Because you don't know the other country. Don't be afraid to believe in God. Why? He's going to help you believe don't be afraid to trust him. Why? He's going to help you trust. Don't be afraid that you won't change. He's going to help you change. Give him a praise. He's going to help us. Some of you are still, you know, growing. You say, boy, I keep kind of falling back. God says, yeah, but once you get up, I'm going to help you. Why? That's my job. Holy Ghost says, I'm here to help you. That's why he never throws you away. He's in love with the backslider. By the way, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, remember the Bible says he's in love with what? The backslider. You're supposed to slide back. You're not supposed to turn around and walk back. That's very important. Clap right there. Good place to clap. See? You don't keep going back into sin intentionally. You're supposed to slip. I can leave that right there. Because some people sit down and they plan their weekend. And then come up on Sunday morning saying, God, forgive me. God said, forgive what? I ain't love it. You ain't love it. The backslide, not the back walker. <laughs> I will help you if you attempt to live my laws. I will help you live them. Yes. It's very important. He's a helper. The Holy Spirit brings Jesus back. No longer limited. Remember, uh, about three sessions ago, I talked about how Christ is limited. He couldn't be in more than one place at the same time. The Holy Spirit was trapped in the body. Well, the Holy Spirit actually makes Christ unlimited. When he came out of Christ's one body, he was able to possess thousands of bodies. And so he became unlimited. 
Jesus Christ could not be in more than one place at the same time. Therefore, for 33 and a half years, God was limited to one body, two hands, two eyes, two ears, and one nose. God was limited because he was trapped in a physical body. The Holy Ghost was limited. That's why Jesus said, it's better for you that I go away. Because if I don't leave this body, you cannot do greater works. Because I'm trapped in one body. I want to dwell in many bodies. So I could be in China and Africa and Haiti and Jamaica all at the same time. I'd be in many bodies. What a greater work. It's the Holy Spirit's dream. Now, John 7 verse 37 says, If any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. The verse isn't finished yet. <laughs> and then he says in this next verse, he says, This spake he concerning the Holy Ghost. Now, I want to just say something for now, and maybe we get the scriptures next week uh, when we deal this. And Pastor Richard and I are trying to teach you this stuff because most of you in this room don't know about the Holy Spirit, even though you sing about him and you talk about him. And you, you, you can't do what you don't know. You can't understand what you're not taught. Let me just say this. Jesus said, as many as believed on me. Are you looking at me? Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. This is very important. As many as believed on me, there shall spring up in him a well of the Holy Spirit. As he said in John 7, there shall be a well. Now, in this verse that we just read just now, it's a strange change. He says, if any man thirst, okay, let me try it again. If any man drinks, there'll be a well. A man got a well. If any man thirsts, there'll be a river. I want you to use your brain now. Now, a well, how many of you ever grew up at a well? Let me see. Come on, Bahamas. Yeah, okay. So you know wells. A well is a big hole in the ground with water in it. Wells, write this down, have no power. A well has no power. A well cannot move anything. It is still water. It's called a spring. He said, if you believe on me, you will drink and there shall be a well springing up. That's the word he used. In you. That means when you are born again, you receive the well. But you have no power. You are saved. If you die, you'll go to heaven. All you got is the well. But life is messing you up. Life is taking you where it wants to take you. Temptation is running you ragged. But you are saved. You have no power. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. One of these days, very soon, I'm going back to Israel. I want to take all of you with me. I want you, I want you to see what your pastor see. The River Jordan does not belong to Israel. It starts in the Alps. It flows down through Syria from a spring. And when it starts to flow, it is so slow, you wouldn't believe that's the same river way down there by, you know, by the Sinai with all that power. When it starts from the spring, it's just a little bubble. Just a little bubble. 
But when you travel down the Israeli desert, there's this river flowing for power. And it moves boulders. It moves trees. It moves rocks. But when you go back where it begin, it moves nothing. Jesus said, look, I don't just want you to have a well. When Jesus rose from the dead, he met with them. He touched them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. They received the well. They were born of the Spirit. They had the will. Then he says, but go to Jerusalem and wait. Because you shall receive power. He said, you cannot witness to my claims without ability. You don't move trees by a bubble. You move trees by a current. I think it's very important to read this verse carefully. If any man thirst. See, you could have the well, but still not be thirsty. You got to want more. I rest my case. There are some Christian groups that are born again. They go into heaven, but Satan whooping them all the way there. They sing their nice little songs. They have their little sermons, one hour meetings, two hour meetings. They're gone. No power. But they got the well. He told his disciples, I know you're saved, but you ain't got the power yet. You wait in Jerusalem. I breathe on you already, but you need to let that thing turn into a river now. And when they gathered together, they were all on one accord. They stayed there for 50 days. Are you thirsty? Pastor Miles, I want to speak in tongues. God says, you don't really want to. You just want it because Pastor Miles got it. You ain't hungry yet. I got baptized in the Holy Spirit because I got mad. I told God, if they could get it, I want it. God said, I like this attitude. You know why most people ain't baptized in the Holy Spirit? They don't even believe in it. God don't give you things you don't ask for. Are you thirsty? He said the river comes from thirst. The well comes from belief. If you believe, he says, you shall have a well. But if you thirst after that, I want more. God says, I'll bring your river out. By the way, rivers come out of wells. So everybody who is born again got the well and don't speak in tongues, the tongues way down inside there. They just ain't speaking in them. <laughs> the gifts of the Spirit are in everyone who believes in Jesus. But they are buried deep if you don't expect them to come up. Are you getting hungry? I say, are you getting hungry? Are you getting hungry for his power? See, you already got his salvation, but you got to be hungry for his power. People say, Pastor Miles, uh, you grew up just like your brothers and sisters. You grew up with your daddy. How come you turned out different? Because I wasn't satisfied with just being a good old Baptist. I knew there must be more. There's got to be more than this singing three hymns and a song and collections. 
What's, I want more. And the Bible says, he who gave you Christ, he would also with him give you all things. I said, God, give me the all things. How about you tonight? I said, how about you tonight? Some of the most boring people I know are Christian people. That's why I don't keep coming to them no more. Boring people. And no power. The Bible says they got a form of godliness. All the rituals, all the commitments, all the traditions. They deny the river. The Holy Spirit is a governor, man. He came to change language. He came to change the way you drive. He came to change the way you dress, what you eat. He came to change things, not to entertain. When a governor takes over territory, he came to make that territory just like his country. And that takes power. Can I hear an amen? Can I suggest to you then, Matthew 24, uh, verse 48, 9, it says, I am going to send you, he says, what my father has promised. I'm going to what? Send you. In other words, when I go to the cross, I'm going to open up this container and I'm going to release what Adam lost. And I'm going to send you what Adam lost. The governor. Shakotibo Sate. But my father promised you, you will get the Holy Ghost again. And I like what the Bible says when they were baptized in the Holy Spirit in Acts. You got to read that again. Peter quoted Joel. Peter says, We are not drunk. He says, This is that which was promised by the prophets that would come. That God would pour out his spirit. Oh, oh man. Listen. Upon all. See how dare you believe that the Holy Spirit is only for you Christian people. The atheist is looking for the Holy Ghost. The agnostic is looking for the Holy Ghost. The Buddhist, the Hindu, the Muslim, they are all looking for the Holy Ghost. They're all looking for the same thing. And they're trying to find him a thousand different ways. He says, I have sent Christ so that he can bring him back to all men. And then he went deeper. Unto you, unto your children, unto your children after you, and your children's children. He said, look, everybody is supposed to get him back. Because everybody lost him. Give God a praise for Jesus' work. That's why I hate the idea of people walking around saying, Are you Pentecostal? I'm Pentecostal. Oh, shut up! The Holy Ghost is for every human. You ain't special because you speak in tongues. You should be ashamed that your brother doesn't. to live a holy life is everybody's privilege that's why I teach so hard because I want you to have everything I have I'm not better than you I'm just a little ahead of you that's all so I turn back to come get you come on somebody I want you to receive everything I have experience what I've experienced enjoy what I have live what I'm living. Why? It's for you and your children and your children's children after you. Give God a praise. It's for everybody. I say it's for everybody. Look at that verse. He said, you stay stay in the city until you have been clothed with what? Power. I'm going and I'm going to send him. And you're going to close you with power from where? From where? That's important. You can get your power from another country. Let me tell you something. When the governor was in our territory, his power was not in the Bahamas. <laughs> his power was in England. 
One of these days I can take you to the government house with me. I want to show you something. If you look on the walls in the governor's mansion, you'll see sometimes some parchment. And you'll see a little plastic thing with a seal on it. That seal has Elizabeth's name on it. Elizabeth II. That seal. That's a sign that the guy who uses that seal has power in England. And whatever he seals in the Bahamas is sealed in England. Whatever you bind on. The Holy Spirit is power from on high. And it's living in you, that power. And he has brought it to you. And you are going home with heaven's power. You're going to sleep in a bed with heaven's power in you. You're going to wake up tomorrow morning and go to work with heaven's power in you. And when you talk to people, heaven's power is talking to them. And when they insult you, don't take it personal. They are insulting heaven's power. So the Bible says, don't avenge, avenge any man. Vengeance belongs to the governor. They could never insult you. Because you don't represent yourself. Praise God. When people attack you and attack the Holy Spirit in you, you should pray for them quickly. Especially if they are your family members. Because they're putting themselves in danger. Don't get mad at them. You pray for them. And tell them, you know, this is not good for your health. Don't, don't do that. Because the Holy Spirit is God's representation. Well, last verse, let me pick up here next week. I want you to write this, this verse down. Luke chapter 23, verse 46. When Jesus died, I call this the power of absence. <laughs> Luke 23, verse 46. He gave up the ghost. The word give up means to breathe out. Expired. Listen. Men did not kill Jesus. He just released himself. He said, no man takes my life. I'll breathe out when I'm ready. Oh, man. All the power was in one body. Watch this now. Shakibu Sate. Oh, Lucy, listen. All the power of heaven is in one body. And the body, I close it now. I promise. The body has blood. Spirits have no blood. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remitting or canceling of sin. Follow me now. So the Holy Spirit on the inside got to depend on Jesus on the outside to first clean you up before he leaves. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, sir, yes, sir. So Christ says, no one kills me. Wait till I finish what I'm doing. When I'm finished, I'll leave. So he's on the cross by his own will. The blood is rushing out of his body, spilling all over the ground, pierce on every part of his head, feet, hands, side, everything bloody. He spilled the blood. The blood cleansed us. And when the blood was all out, he says, It is. He said, he said I'm finished. Come on, give him He said, I'm finished. He was talking to the Holy Ghost. Shout amen. He told the Holy Ghost, okay, I finished now. You could leave. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Shoda Busa. I have cleaned them all up. 
no you ain't trapped just in one but you can now oh lord come on give him a praise hallelujah he says you can now live it all so he said go get them and as many as believed on him to them gave he power close your bibles and give him a big shout i say lift your voice and praise him he has paid the price so we can be filled again with the governor of heaven so we can live with power overcome every temptation this week by the power of the holy ghost you ain't got to fight temptation by yourself this week all you got to say is holy ghost i'm giving pressure and he'll bring power out of your life and you'll overcome it you won't believe you're out of it it'll be over because he is here to give you power to be witnesses unto him this is why he came Thank you once again for listening to this message as we hope that it has been a blessing to you. Our goal is to show you new paths and opportunities so that you can discover your purpose. It is your love, support, and partnership that makes Monroe Global possible. Please visit us online at www.monroeglobal.com for more product, partnership, or to join us at one of our live events around the world.